All right, we are starting a new chapter. Immigrants and Workers is the name of our chapter. So we're going to talk about the millions of people who moved here around the turn of the century and also labor unions. That's what the Workers Party is, okay? So the new immigrants, uh, they were from Europe mostly, okay? So immigrants that were pushed out of Europe are pulled to America for cultural, political, and economic reasons, okay? So y'all remember pushes and pulls. These were on your basic U.S. history vocabulary chapter, okay? So pushes are negative things that make you want to leave a country, while pulls are things that attract you to a country, okay? So what were some of these push factors that, that made the Europeans leave? All right, this is what you need to know. Uh, factors which force immigrants to want to leave their country. Europe's population had doubled in the 1800s, which created overpopulation problems. Duh, okay? So can you imagine if Church Point's population doubled? We would have some major problems around here, okay? So anyway, what's going on here, y'all, is as the population doubles, the availability of land in Europe decreases by half. There's half as much land for sale. Land is at a premium. And there's a place in the world where you can come to get 160 free acres of land. And that's America with the Homestead Act, okay? So this Homestead Act pulled Americans as the population problem pushed them out of Europe. That's one factor. Okay, so pools are factors which attract immigrants to a new land, okay? Uh, most reasons are for economics, cheap farmland and jobs. You got that Homestead Act thing going. We got all the industrial revolution happening up in the Northeast, okay? And we have political and religious freedom from tyranny, okay? So, um, a big thing that America was founded on is religious freedom. You can have whatever religion you want or no religion. And that is a pull, okay? Whereas if you lived in, let's say, uh, Italy, you had to be a Catholic. No question, okay? Uh, if you lived in England, you had to belong to the Church of England. And there was no other religion, okay? Um, but anyway... So over here, you can do what you want. Now, immigration after 1870 changes drastically as more immigrants come from Southern and Eastern Europe rather than Western Europe and Northern Europe. So if you look right here at this map, this is Europe right here. The old immigrants came from places like Spain, France, Germany, England, uh, you know, those places. The new immigrants were coming from places like Greece and uh, Russia, all the Slavic countries right here, you got Yugoslavia, Czechoslovakia. Um, basically, all these countries are ethnically Russian. Even though they're not Russians, they're kind of the same people. And also Italy, Italy was a big one. We had millions of people coming from Italy. And eventually, one of the other groups is gonna be from Ireland, okay? Upon arriving in America, one of the first sites that people would see was the Statue of Liberty, okay? Now, the Statue of Liberty actually was created by a man named Gustav Eiffel, as we learned in our vocabulary. Uh, this is Mr. Gustav here. Uh, so anyway, by the way, he created the Eiffel Tower, and y'all remember the World's Fair where Tesla lit up the World's Fair with electric lights? Well, a previous World's Fair had been held over there in Paris, France, and they commissioned Gustav Eiffel to make a grand entranceway to the World's Fair. Well, that grand entranceway was this thousand foot tower called the Eiffel Tower. And if you look at the bottom of it, there's a huge arch right here, and that's where the people walk through. So really, the Eiffel Tower is kind of made as a gate, uh, you know, a gate opening, basically it. So anyway, Gustav Eiffel, he admired the Americans. He wanted to give them Lady Liberty, the statue he had created in France, uh, so that way we could commemorate a hundred years of America. Okay, America's founded 1776, that's our birthday, and it was 1876. He wants to give us the statue for our hundredth anniversary. But there's a problem, okay? Gustav says, I'm gonna give you this free, beautiful statue. All you have to do, America, is pay for the pedestal to put it on. 
okay? Pay for this building that you're gonna put this statue on, all right? Well, at the time, Congress was going through some rough economic times in America, and they said, yeah, we don't want your statue. We can't afford it. Well, Gustav was severely um, upset about that, and a newspaper man named Joseph Pulitzer, he was one of the, ma the two main newspaper guys in America, uh, Joseph Pulitzer, you might have heard of the Pulitzer Prize for Journalism. That's the top honor you can get as a journalist. Anyway, Joseph Pulitzer says, we've got to get this statue. We've got to continue our good relationship with the French. So he put in this newspaper. He said, we're going to fund the statue ourselves as private citizens. So any donation, if you give any donation to the newspaper, we will pass that on to build the statue's pedestal. And we will also... If it doesn't matter what size donation you got, I will print your name in my newspaper and say that you donated to the Statue of Liberty. So millions of donations pour in all from around America, and in less than a year, they had all the money they needed to build the statue. So they shipped over the statue in pieces, and they erected it in New York Harbor, and from then on, we have had the Statue of Liberty. Now, you need to know who created the Statue of Liberty. You also need to know how the Statue of Liberty got saved, okay? And what you really need to focus on is publisher Joseph Pulitzer paid for it with donations from the American people through his newspaper, all right?